Hi, I'm Alexa Morales, and I'm Director of Developer Content for Oracle. And joining me today is Manish Kapoor, Director of OCI Product Management based in Austin, Texas. Welcome, Manish. Hi, Alexa. How are you doing? I'm doing great, and I'm so happy that you're joining me for our first ever edition, hopefully not the last edition, of Oracle Developer News. The idea is to bring the Oracle Developer Newsletter to life with a little bit of commentary. And if you don't know what that newsletter is like, it's easy to sign up at the link right here. This month, Manish, was pretty exciting because, well, last month, Clay McGorick announced the ARM-based servers available in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So yeah. that was late May. What was the response right away to that announcement? Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me in, in your first uh, ever show of this kind. Uh, glad to be here and excited to be talking to you. So yeah, the ARM launch was a pretty big launch for us. And I'm, I was really excited that I got a chance to work on that launch closely with Clay and the rest of the product development team. It has been one of the most successful launches that I've ever seen at Oracle. Uh, in the last few years. We immediately saw a big uptick of our ARM compute offering all around the world, in all the regions, almost all the regions, to a point that uh, certain regions started running out of capacity. So we had to do everything possible to add additional capacity as quickly as we can to help the developers who were trying to use the new free tier, which included the ARM Ampere compute offering. Yeah. So it's a very good problem that we have, uh, right? Right, so, yeah, that's uh, an amazing problem. In a way, it reminded me of something that goes way back, which is when James Gosling was talking about releasing Java and just seeing, you know, all of a sudden seeing those downloads just growing and growing. And you have a long career with Oracle and with Sun. Uh, how far back do you go with Oracle and Sun? Yeah, I'll be giving away my age <laughs> if I give you the number of years. But yeah, I've been uh, at Oracle for about 10 plus years now. Wow. Uh, came to Oracle via the Sun Microsystems acquisition. Mm -hmm. And I've been around since the Java days. So yeah, it's a similar kind of uh, experience that I'm seeing with uh, ARM Compute. Java was uh, adoption was huge for us, and we have you know millions of developers around the world, and we are seeing something similar with ARM compute by the way of uh, adoption trend that we have seen in the last what it's about three weeks back. But of course, you had, and I was lucky. I was I felt uh, privileged to have insight into you know you were trying to get cr create the perfect message for those developers. So the good news is they can always find that capacity. It just might not be in their home region. Correct. Correct. So if, if as a developer, you're trying out our new Ampere even compute offering in a data center and you find that you're a little low on the capacity in certain regions, feel free to try another region or in fact, another availability domain if you like, and you should be able to get capacity and we are adding more capacity as I speak. That is really exciting. Yeah, there's also like an ARM accelerator, which is kind of cool. So for certain projects. Yeah, yeah. At Oracle, we have never done anything like ARM accelerator before. Mm -hmm. It's perhaps the first time we are, uh, you know, introducing this program. So we'll see how it goes. The uh, early uh, reception has been very, very positive from both from media as well as developers around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the ARM Accelerator program, for those who are not aware of it, is basically uh, we give away ARM credits or OCI compute credits to ARM developers around the world whether you are a system integrator, a partner, ISV uh, software vendor, or our customers who want to just explore and build something new or pull some full applications or try to port some applications over from the x86 architecture to uh, the new uh, ARM v v64 architecture, this is exactly what you need, right? So anything in the software world, whether it comes to programming languages or a new platform or a new compiler, it's very difficult for developers to get access to all the resources to try out quickly and easily, especially when it comes to compute architectures. If you need compute architectures to develop something serious, free tier may not be sufficient for you, right? Or you may need more capacity than what, what is available in the free tier. Uh, for those kind of use cases, we have the ARM Accelerator program where you can apply for extra credits for a year, and these go up to 365 days. So you have compute capacity at your fingertips to develop net new applications. Wow, that is super cool. Now, you also touched on the idea of what's in the free tier and what you can or can't access. So we have 13 new always free services. Can you talk a little bit yep. about that? Yep, yep. We, uh, we actually announced a always free tier back in September 2019. Mm -hmm. And I was part of that uh, launch as well. 
Uh, so I clearly remember we started with just a handful of services. You could count them on your fingertips, like four or five services. And now we have more than 20 services, which are part of the always free tier. So cloud free tier basically com uh, has two parts to it. One is the 30 day uh, free trial where you get 30 day for 30 days, you get all the cloud services pretty much for free uh, uh, for you to try. And, uh, uh, you know, after that, after your 30 day trial is over, uh, the always free services kick in. And there's a bunch of services which are always free to the developers, forever free. They can do whatever they want with those services. And those remain with the developers or with the uh, trial users, even after the 30 day trial is over. Right. So in those th always free services, we started with four or five services, but we have now added about 13 more services. So we are over about 20 services in the last one and a half years or so. Uh, and these are services which are actually have got enough capacity and enough free, uh, free capacity in them that developers can do something really creative and useful with them. These are not micro shapes. For example, for Ampere, we're giving away four cores of Ampere processor, ultra processor for free, along with 24 GB of RAM, which is, uh, which is in fact the most generous free tier offering in the industry. Wow. Uh, using a capacity like this, you could build, you know, WordPress like websites, blog, uh, blogging platforms or your own websites, or even Todd has uh, shown how to build a Minecraft server using this free capacity. Right. So you could do some pretty good thing, cool things with this capacity uh, at your fingertips, right? In addition to the ARM compute, we also added services like logging. We already had autonomous transaction processing database. We added Apex, our low code platform service as a free service, always free service. Uh, we added the NoSQL service. Uh, so you have a bunch of new services, which are all targeted towards developers, right. getting them going and give, giving them access so that they can start building and uh, trying out new uh, you know, technologies uh, right away. With micro shapes, you're kind of limited. And if you have services which, are, which go away after 30 days, you kind of, you know, you have to re-sign re up. But with always free, that's not the case. They remain with you forever, and you can do some uh, serious uh, development work using these services. Wow. So that's wonderful. Moving on to the next thing, we have a lot of new releases, and we always have a lot of new releases for developers in the developer newsletter. And I think it's exciting. You know, I get to see from my perspective just how many things across the company are constantly being evolved and released for developers. So I'm going to put you on the spot, Manish, with our random wheel spinner. And we are going to spin the wheel. And of these 11 releases, I hope you're ready. We're going to put you on the spot and we're going to see. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. I'm spinning the wheel. Up. And it looks like the Java Management Service. Oh, wow. Yes. We launched the Java Management Service, I believe, in, on 9th of June this year. And uh, it is a service that lets you discover, monitor, as well as manage your Java uh, applications, uh, which are powered by Java uh, uh, Development Kit or JDK, uh, wherever they live, uh, whether they're running in Oracle Cloud as a part of their compute instances or as part of Kubernetes uh, node pools, or whether they're living and running in your on-premises data centers, or for that matter, in any other cloud, uh, wherever you have your uh, Java virtual machines running, uh, this service running in OCI lets you discover those Java instances, uh, manage those instances, uh, monitor those instances, and then ma eventually uh, manage those instances also. Mm -hmm. So you get an inventory of all the uh, Java instances running in your uh, if in your tenancy or in your uh, you know in your company as such. For example, uh, and this is very very useful. So if you are a big Java sh shop uh, who has let's say for the sake of example, 60 Java applications running in your data center, in a provider's cloud, in your, uh, you know, uh, in Oracle cloud, in a third party cloud, wherever they are, these 60 applications are spread all across different places, different environments. How do you manage and monitor those applications? How do you know which one is running which version? How do you have an inventory of all your applications? Uh, how do you, uh, you know, pass them together? Uh, how do you uh, make sure you're compliant in terms of the latest security patches? 
So this service helps you do that. And uh, it's, it's a really nice service that complements our application performance monitoring uh, service from OCI. That's great. Okay, well, here we go. I'm going to put you on the spot again. We're going to spin the wheel and see our next release. Next up, this is a WebLogic server for OCI and OKE. What is that? WebLogic, as you may know, is a Java EE uh, application server. Uh, that is very, very popular and still being used uh, worldwide by several customers. In fact, uh, quite a few of uh, the Oracle middleware products are built on top of uh, WebLogic as well. Uh, it, it's a server similar to uh, you know uh, Tomcat and JBoss that's out there in the market. Uh, so customers have been asking us to uh, run these, they have been running these WebLogic Java EE applications uh, on-premises and they've been wanting to modernize those applications and, uh, you know, um, move to the next new cloud native world, so to say, uh, and exploit the advantages of cloud native uh, application development. So what we have done is we have given customers a path to modernize their applications, existing WebLogic applications, by moving them to Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And they have two choices for them. One is a marketplace image for uh, WebLogic, which uh, lets you, that's a simpler, easy streamlined path, which gives you some modernization uh, and it's much easier to uh, uh, implement. So what that gives you is a virtual machine based WebLogic server cluster running in OCI. Uh, really quickly, very validated set of uh, best practices deployment, which lets you deploy your applications quickly and easily and migrate your app existing applications easily to Oracle Cloud. And the second one is the OKE uh, flavor or the Oracle Kubernetes engine, which is what we call it as OKE. So we have made WebLogic available as uh, something that can be deployed as part of a Kubernetes cluster in a node pool. Uh, so the OKE flavor lets you uh, run WebLogic inside a Kubernetes cluster, uh, just like we would run any other cloud native application. And we have built a WebLogic operator uh, for Kubernetes, which lets you manage the lifecycle operations very easily using the Kubernetes API. All right, Manish, last product out of these 11. Let's see what we get. Spinning the wheel. And that one is Heladon. What do you know about Heladon? This is an interesting microservices product that we have. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect segue from what we talked about last, uh, about WebLogic, right? Uh, WebLogic is a slightly, uh, not slightly, it's actually a heavier version uh, application server. But, uh, you know, if you're developing lightweight, stateless applications, microservices applications, loosely coupled applications. That's where Heladon comes in. Heladon is an open source framework for building and deploying your Java-based microservices. And it has been designed and um, it has been designed and you know architected for the cloud native world from the inception itself. Uh, it's a collection of Java libraries that helps you write microservices in a cloud native world and it is powered by Netty web server uh, underneath. Yeah, that's really exciting. So we've, yeah, we've covered the whole spectrum from giant Java shops to people running tiny microservices. Well, with that, I want to close out our first edition of our developer newsletter, live news reading, whatever we're going to call this. Thank you so much for joining me, Manish, and hopefully people like it and we'll be back next month. Let me know what you think and feel free to sign up for the Oracle Developer Newsletter so that you can get your own fresh take on everything for developers at Oracle every month. Thanks for watching.